Thank you for joining us. I'm Jasmine Brooks. The big game is over and another Super Bowl Sunday in the books. For our own Rob Handrahan, this year's Super Bowl is special. Not because of the teams. There are no friendly wagers. He's not even from either city. But as Rob tells you in this personal story, this Super Bowl Sunday could have been anything but super. The last time you saw Rob was June 16th, a date he will always remember, and one that our CBS 21 News family will never forget. This is CBS 21 News at 5. I've had a really bad newscast, apparently. Um, yeah, a lot of people, I guess, wondered why I was out of breath. Good evening. Thanks for joining us here at 5. I'm Rob Hanrahan. And I remember saying goodbye to you and Larry, my executive producer, in the parking lot. Have a great night. I'll see you right back here tomorrow. Something happened after I fell asleep. Rob was, like, crying in his sleep and just looked like he was in a lot of pain. So I woke him up. You know, I was like, Rob, what? What? What's wrong? Wake up. Wake up. I could feel this, this pain right here. And I think she said, you've been crying in your sleep. And I, 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 and I was like, what, you know, what's wrong? And he's like, well. I said, life would be better if you'd stop kicking me in the chest. And I was like, what? I'm not kicking you. Wake up. You know, then I was like, you know, wake up. And um, I don't know. I was like, I got to get a shower. I got to go. And he, I think he went back to sleep. I went back to sleep. And I went into this dream. It was very vivid that we were in this ballroom with these people at a health seminar and my phone blows up and I look at it we're all connected by phone to the doctor at the front it was a female doctor and she said Rob the text read Rob get to a hospital immediately either your right or your left is 100 percent blocked the other side is 80 percent blocked call an ambulance and then before I know it he's calling me and my name and he's saying you know call an ambulance now like calling him and I'm like, why, what, like what? And he's like, my chest is just, it hurts so bad. And I think I'm having a heart attack. And they said, well, we don't think you're having a heart attack, um, but something's wrong, something's not right. You know, we'll, we're gonna take you to the ER. The ER is fantastic at Harrisburg Hospital and they immediately started running tests on me. The pain that had woken him up, that he thought I was kicking him, had gone away for a while and then it came back in the hospital when he was on the phone with me. I can't describe the pain. He got real quiet and then and then he goes, okay, um, Stacy. And I said to her, it's time for me to go now. And I was like, okay. And he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go now. I love you. And I was like, okay, bye. And she thought I meant it's, I got to go have a test. I, I didn't mean it that, that way. But it felt like somebody hit me with one of those giant axes right here. The doctor was at her station and a nurse ran up and said, Rob's coded. That means that my heart stopped. And then the phone rang again, you know, like clockwork almost. They were doing compressions on me when the doctor got to my bedside. They had the paddles ready, and as soon as they could, they shocked me. And she says, you know, I'm really sorry to tell you, but we believe your husband's having a heart attack. Um, his heart has stopped twice. I got to this, this point where the, whatever was happening and shutting down went through this area of my body and the pain stopped. And all of a sudden, everything got peaceful. And I knew that I was dead. I was curled up in a place that was dark and quiet and calm. But boy, it was a place I've never been and it gives me great hope because there's something else there. That was my last real memory, other than, poof, I was back. We were able to bring him back both times. 
but we think you should get down here. <laughs> but I do remember coming out of that and the doctor said to me, I've got to intubate you. And you turned to me, she said, and I looked into her eyes and I remember saying this. I said, you do whatever you have to do. And all I could think of was my family. All I kept replaying was Rob saying to me, Stacey, I'm, I'm gonna go now. Like in that voice that I had never heard him use before. It was so calm and it was so matter of fact. Like I, it's time for me to go. Thank you for letting me share my personal story with you tonight. Tomorrow night, I'm going to share with you something that I can't fully explain, and that is what it's like to flatline in an emergency room. Join us for that. That's coming up tomorrow on CBS 21 News.